I miss mathematics, what I sometimes realize. I miss imaginary numbers. I miss the Mobius strip. I miss integration and differentiation. Mathematics was a creative outlet for me. Being able to use creativity and logic to solve problems fueled me. I miss mathematics because I don't study it anymore. Malcolm Forbes, publisher of Forbes magazine, once said, the purpose of education is to replace an empty mind with an open one. And what he says about education is important. Education is supposed to enrich one's life, prepare them for a fulfilling career, allow them how to allow them to learn how to build new relationships and to learn skills and to be curious about the world around them. But what happens when the educational establishments that are supposed to be there for us fail us instead? University for me was weird. I came out as pansexual, but I also realized I suffered pretty heavily from anxiety and depression. I struggled with my relationship with alcohol, but I also learned that I had a passion for fundraising. I started to embrace my fatness for the first time. And most importantly, I had sex for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but let me let you in on a secret. Due to many of the things I have previously mentioned, especially my mental health, a lot of the things that I learned at university didn't have anything to do with my actual course. University academically almost left me with an empty mind rather than an open one. And this isn't individual to me. We are facing a student mental health crisis right now. How we're facing a national crisis with our mental health. Roughly a third of students report feeling clinical levels of psychological distress. Student suicide, whilst has been low over the past couple of years, has generally seen a huge, huge increase since 2007. And 61% of universities report at least a 25% increase in demand for their counselling services. And whilst there is a lack of funding nationally going into services within the NHS, but particularly mental health, and we should hold a government ac accountable for that. I still believe that there are a lot of things that universities, student unions, and departments can do to make things better for us. In my opinion, and the opinion of many organizations such as Universities UK, is that we should be prioritizing a whole university approach to tackling the student mental health crisis. But what does this mean? It means that university, student unions, academic department, accommodation providers, and student leaders all have an important role to play within a larger strategy to help support their students so they are happy and thriving at university. To get a better idea of how this would work in practice, I think we should have a deeper look at my own university experience. This is it at a glance. Before university, I was already incredibly anxious about starting. Whilst I had strong, strong friendships in secondary school, making new friendships was always a struggle for me. But I thought I would be fine, because university is university, and you naturally make friends at university, and everything's fine. But I still wasn't surprised when I found freshers socially a struggle. But what could my university have done? <laughs> First of all, they didn't, and I still don't believe they hold comprehensive mental health workshops during Freshers' Week. These workshops would include things like stressing the importance that mental health has on your study. If you are not doing well mentally, there is a good chance you won't succeed academically as well. It would enable students to be able to recognize when they are in trouble and when they need further support. And finally, it would help students to just cope with the day-to-day -day pressures of university that may not need further support. But everyone needs to look after their well-being. But I didn't get better for a while. 
I still didn't make friends for about seven months, and this is a period of my life I like to call the lonely crisis season, because I just wasn't in a good way. Um, panic attacks really did increase in frequency, suicidal thoughts wrecked my mind, and I was even too anxious to be able to cook in our shared space, so I had to resort to buying cold, cheap chicken wraps every day from our local convenience store so that I could just eat and live. At that point, I just needed someone to make friends for me, to put it bluntly. I needed people to be able to set goals for me, and I needed to be told how I could get better. And this isn't individual to me either. And a, a survey done by FICA, which is an emotional fitness app, found that 96% of students wish they had emotional wellness as a part of their curriculum. And I, this would also mirror the fact that mental health modules generally are being rolled out across schools nationally from September 2020. And I believe this would be incredibly useful because students, perhaps for the first time ever, would really be able to learn how to take control of their own well-being in a simple and effective way until they can get the further support they need. But alas, I got better on my own. I am happy to say that by the end of summer, I had at least two friends, which was a big achievement for me, and I was happy again. Essentially, this is how happy I was at the end of first year. Really do have a good look at how overjoyed I was and how better I was. So as summer passed, autumn term second year was here and I was okay again. I was definitely, definitely okay again, right? Of course not. My issues hadn't been resolved and I wasn't cured, but I didn't know that. And more importantly, no one else knew that, but most importantly, my department didn't know that. So when I was unable to explain why I wasn't going to lectures, I was told to drop out or to really consider what I was doing at university because it might just not be right for me. But I was just ill. I thought I was being lazy when I would spend all day in bed because I didn't have the motivation or energy to do anything that brought me pleasure anymore. I thought I was being silly when I was physically too anxious to go to a seminar because I was scared that my tutors or students would look down on me for not having done the work or not being able to answer questions. And that was my second year. I progressively realized that I wasn't okay, and to make matters worse, I was living off campus, so the only person that was potentially able to spot that I was struggling academically and personally was my supervisor. Supervisors matter. Supervisors are really, really important because they are perhaps the only contact within a department that students feel able and comfortable to talk to. They also have the power to recommend things like leave of absence and other practical solutions that can really help students on the path to recovery so they can flourish academically later on. So what happens when you don't have anyone in your apartment that you feel able to talk to? You suffer like I did. Realistically, I should have gone to my supervisor during many points of my university experience but especially the summer exam season of my second year. I was a mess in every possible sense of the word. I didn't realize I was a mess, but I was having more panic attacks. I was feeling, feeling more suicidal and depressed than I ever have, and I wasn't eating and I wasn't sleeping properly. But I was still too scared to speak to my supervisor about it because I was scared that due to previous experience, he would say that I was making it up or that there was nothing I could do about it at that point and I just needed to work harder. So if there are any academic and staff in the room tonight, I would like to offer some words of a guidance on how you may want to consider approaching and talking to students from now on. 
The first and second one are kind of interlinked. The first one is to be positive and non-judgmental. The second one is to allow your students to open up about any personal factors within their life that may be affecting their academic life. This is important because it will allow you to build that bond with your student. They will feel more than comfortable to be able to speak to you about anything and this will benefit you because then you'll be able to stomp out any problems. And then they can flourish academically like you want them to. Thirdly is to signpost them to very relevant services. If you could do this on their behalf, if allowed due to safeguarding reasons, that would be perhaps most beneficial because um, then it's done for the student. And fourthly is to really reflect on the conversations you have with students, to really understand what they're going through because doing a bit of research really will transform your way of looking at mental health problems. But you'll be happy to know I'm on the path to recovery. The path of recovery may look like this, but it's the path to recovery, no less. <laughs> I am seeing my GP. I'm on medication now. I'm enrolled in a low mood course run by the NHS. But it's too late because I failed my degree. I wanted to be a mathematician. I wanted to complete my integrated masters in mathematics and be able to go on to study a PhD in mathematics. And I wanted to be a professor of topology or algebra or mathematical logic. And the lack of well thought out mental health provision that universities are providing are causing countless numbers of broken dreams and students dropouts and student suicides that can be avoided. But the good thing is that we are really, as a society, but particularly within university and academia, pushing towards finally getting that support for students. Behind me are a couple of success stories um, over the past year from universities and organizations. And to put on top of that, from December 2019, the UK's leading student mental health charity, Student Minds, will be kind of showcasing and celebrating the important work that universities do do through the University Mental Health Charter. And now more than ever, student opinion and student voice is being brought to the forefront of conversation on the support they need to flourish at university. The momentum is growing and I'm looking forward to, in a couple of years, the potential for students to really flourish at university. Students like me who, who once had to perhaps drop out or fail their degree due to mental illness. I'm looking forward to being able to go back to university and finally getting the support I deserved. Thank you.